Hello, hello, it's Dumplet here. Here's an item on algebra. Find the range of y equals x squared over x minus 1 for all x in the domain of the function. As usual, pause this video if you'd like to give this item a try. But if you're done, let us dive into the solution. Now here we'll be using a technique called the discriminant method and that's obviously using the discriminant of something and that's that discriminant is should be something um, that you guys are familiar with so let's try to see how to do this item so first let's just re uh, clear the denominators let's multiply both sides by x minus 1 the left side here becomes y squared minus y and then the right the right hand side just becomes x squared and then let's move everything to one side we're gonna get that x squared minus yx plus y equals 0 and I highlighted the x, the x's with blue so that we can kind of see that this equation is technically a quadratic equation in x. Although there is a y as a variable there, but generally we can uh, solve for x in terms of y using the, for example, the quadratic formula. Now, since we know that x is a real number because we're talking about functions here, so we're technically saying that, oh, this quadratic equation has real roots. Now for it to have, for the quadratic equation to have real roots, as you can recall, the discriminant must be greater than or equal to zero. So if, if, it, if the discriminant was less than zero, then that's the case where we have like imaginary roots. But if the discriminant is greater than or equal to zero, then we are sure that it has real roots. So let's talk about how to get the discriminant. Now we know that the discriminant it's the thing inside the square root. We can recall the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus. Uh, this thing inside the square root, the b squared minus 4ac, that's called, uh, this, this, that's called a discriminant. And that's the thing that's going to tell us if we have real roots or imaginary roots. So let's try to see the values. Uh, let's try to get the values of a, b, and c from the equation above. The a is the coefficient of x squared, so that's just technically 1. So a equals 1. Next for b, that's the thing beside the x that's technically negative y. So b here would be negative y. And then c here, it's going to be the constant term. In this case, it's y. So after getting the values of a, b, and c, all we have to do is just get the discriminant by just substituting uh, these, three values, oops, these three values into the discriminant. And we would get that the discriminant is equal to y squared minus 4y. And we want this thing to be greater than or equal to zero. Again, since be, uh, because x is a real number. So this is now technically a quadratic inequality. So to solve the quadratic inequality, we want to factor the left side and then make, make the other side equal to zero. So we have y times y minus four greater than or equal to zero. Now we want to get the critical points and the critical points meaning uh, the points where one side becomes zero, in this case, the left side. So technically just solving for the roots, so we have like y equals 0 and y equals 4. If we solve for the roots of the left side of the expression technically. So we're going to plot those two in the number line and then we're just going to use the testing of points. Now we can, we can just test a value in this region, in this region, and in this region and then just see if it works. Because if a value in that region works, then uh, that entire region will be a solution since we have inequalities here. So for example, in region 1, let us try the value of negative 1. If I substitute negative 1, y becomes negative 1, y minus 4 becomes negative 5, and negative 1 times negative 5, that's equal to 5, and yes, indeed, that's greater than or equal to 0. So this is correct, so we know that uh, the, re the region where negative 1 is contained, this part will be a solution. Now again, since we have a greater than or equal to, there is this existence of an equal to, we know that all values of y less than or equal to zero is gonna work. So that be that's because we have region one and the equal sign here, the greater than or equal to is the consequence of having a greater than or equal to here. All right, now let's try to test, uh, let's say for example, um, two as about here. We try to substitute into y, it's gonna become two y minus 4 becomes negative 2, so 2 times negative 2, that's negative 4, and that's not greater than equal to 0, so okay, this doesn't work then, so we would not consider any solution in the middle region, 
and then here let's just try a value let's say 5 and if y equals 5 then it's going to be 5 times 1 and yes this is equal to 5 so it is greater than or equal to 0 so same case as the first region this region would indeed be correct and because we have a inequality uh, an equality case here for the inequality then we would consider um, having the the equal to in the inequality so all values of y greater than or equal to 4 is going to work so here's a nice technique when talking about uh, when solving quadratic inequalities if the sign is a greater than or a greater than or equal to it is guaranteed that the outside uh, the regions to the left and to the right those are the two regions that's going to work in the uh, quadratic inequality. Provided, provided that um, the coefficient here, for example, um, the coefficient of the squared term, so in this case y squared, provided that the coefficient of the squared term is positive. So in this case it's 1, which is positive, so that's um, a nice technique that you could have. Now on the other hand, if this was less than or equal to 0, if or less than, so if it was a less than or less than or equal to, then the region in the middle would be the solution. So again, if it's greater than or greater than or equal to, the region outside. But if not, if it was less than or less than or equal to, then it's going to be the region inside. In this case, it was the greater than or equal to symbol. So that's why we have the left and the right portions to become the solutions. Now, we have two solutions, y less than or equal to 0 or y greater than or equal to 4. Again take note of the use of the or here it's because um, we have to combine the two so the range of the function is y such that y is greater or equal to 4 or y is less than or equal to 0 now why can I say that because y is just our function and if we get a range of values of y that's going to be the range of the function now that's the beauty of using the discriminant method because just switching the x, uh, sorry, just solving the uh, for just solving x in terms of y, technically in the form of a quadratic equation, we can use a discriminant to get like the range of values for y. Now, obviously, if you don't want to write this in the set uh, builder notation, you can always write it in the interval notation. Again, you can click this card if you're not familiar with that yet. But anyways, if you want the answer in interval notation, that's going to be uh, open. Parenthesis, uh, parenthesis negative infinity to zero again it's a bracket since it's a less than or equal to and then we take the union it we take the union of it with um, four to positive infinity so that's going to be the answer if it was asked for uh, if the question was asking for the interval notation anyways either the set builder notation or the interval notation that's going to be our final answer hopefully you guys learned something new from this video and I'll see you in the next one Bye-bye.